Women in the Brit Hadashah New Testament to welcome everyone on tonight okay so we're going to get started uh on tonight we're going to be um discussing the the parable of the ten virgins this is part one we're going to take our time and, um so we're going to get started praise ya. okay the ten virgins are your lights bur burning Okay, this parable is one of the sequence of responses to a question that was asked in uh, Matthew 24 and 3, which states, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, our scripture reference for tonight is going to be Matthew 25, 1 to 13. We do have two slides uh, with the scriptures on them that we're going to put up now. And what we're going to do, what I'd like to do on tonight, um, is read through the scriptures from uh, Matthew uh, 25, 1 through 13. And then we're going to go back and we're going to examine a specific aspect of this parable. Uh, to lay a background for uh, uh, next week's lesson. Uh, first, we're going to just read through without uh, giving an exegesis of each of the particular, this, uh, each scripture. We're just going to read through the scriptures. I'm going to need volunteers for that. And then after that, I'm going to a couple of questions to you. And then through scripture reference, we're going to examine this particular aspect. And I think that it will enlighten our hearts and our minds, and we'll go into next week with a, 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 a better understanding of, of what's being uh, uh, stated here. Can I get uh, some volunteers to read? Uh, we can take maybe um, four verses uh, at a time to read uh, through 1 through 13. Us. We, you have three volunteers, Sister Diane, Sister Danielle, and myself. Okay. All right. So the first two, can you read four verses each? And then, Sister June, you finish it up. All right, Sister Diane, um, you'll have verses one, one to four here. Okay. <clears throat> Matthew 25, uh, verses one through four. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes. Uh, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And I'm coming from the KJV. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, indeed. There would not be enough for us and you. Instead, go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. And later the other maidens also came, saying, Master, Master, open up for us. <clears throat> but he answered saying 
Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, because you do not know the day nor the hour in which the son of Adam is coming. Okay, I says, June, can you just put the second uh, part up because this first part only went to verse seven, just for the uh, record. Can you just put the second slide up with the verses on it? Yes, ma'am, okay. I, I changed. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, so now, uh, you can uh, progress to the next slide. We're going to present the two questions that we're going to be discussing on tonight. The first question is, who or what does the lamps represent to you? People, what does the lamps represent to you? And our second question, Who or what does the oil represent to you? So we're going to take our time with this and we're going to uh, examine some scriptures, but right before we do, just wanna show you in the Hebrew, since we do have a Hebrew class, just we're not gonna get deep into it, but a mnemonic uh, meaning of the words or anything like that, but I do just wanna show you uh, what these words look like in the Hebrew. The first word uh, in the Hebrew is a uh, lamp. And in your private study, you can um, take your time and you can uh, go back and, and you can uh, meditate on it. And it's uh, the word for lamp is the noon and it's the resh, and it would be pronounced uh, ner. And uh, this is the same, this is a uh, 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 parent root from which um, the adopted root menorah comes from also. But menorah, it's the prefix uh, mem is added in the beginning. And then you have the feminine uh, 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 suffix on the end. And that's how you get the word menorah. But this is the word that uh, the, the menorah uh, uh, comes from or originates from also. And the second word is the word for oil. It's one of the words that's used most of the time, a little bit more than anything else for oil. And that word is shaman. And it's the it's the, the it's the shen, it's the mem, and it's the noon. So you may want to take some time in the future and uh, just look at these words since we are uh, uh, looking at the mnemonic, uh, mnemonic me meaning of many words in a Hebrew and, and, and many of you that are in that class, you know how to uh, dissect the words and get down to the uh, meaning of what these words represent. Remembering that each Hebrew word has basically originated from a function and um, you may get a little more insight out of them, but we're not going to go into all of that tonight. We are going to go and to the scripture references, we wanna see what the word uh, states about each of these uh, topics, lamp and oil. Next week when we gather together, we'll talk about the foolish and we'll talk about the wise and, and all the other aspects. But tonight we're just going to pretty much focus on these particular um, the uh, scripture references for uh, each of these words. And you, uh, let's look at the scripture references for lamp. Okay, we've got quite a few. Uh, can I get some volunteers to take these, take one at a time, and we're going to uh, see what we're getting out of these, and then we'll do the same for uh, for lamp. So this, these words, these scriptures here, kind of give us an idea of what a lamp uh, uh, symbolizes uh, in the word we get a greater understanding. The first, the first scripture is Matthews 5, 14 to 16. Okay, I think you have uh, some volunteers over there, uh, Sis June. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Sister Maria will take the first one and then Sister Letty, the second one. All right, okay. 
You you are the light of the world. It is impossible for a city to be hidden on a mountain, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it shines to all those in the house. Let your light so shine before men so that they see your good works and praise your Father who is in the heaven. Okay, as you read these scriptures, if, if any, if you receive any insight or if there's anything you want to state about the scriptures, feel free to do so. Sis, are you getting anything in particular out of this scripture? We are the light of the world and we can't be hidden from anyone. Praise your sis. Okay, who has the next scripture? Sister Letty. Which one are you taking, Sister Letty? Luke 12, 35 and 36? Or are you going across? Shalom, sisters. Sorry. Um, I'll, I'll take Luke uh, chapter 12, 35, 36. Okay. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Um, did you well, read 35 and 36? I did. Yes, I did. Um, okay. Sorry about that. I wasn't. Um, I'll just, I'll come back and comment on it later. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, okay, Sis Letty. Um, does anyone else want to comment on this particular scripture? Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for the master when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. I see Sis Diane's hand up. I don't know whether your hand is up to uh, add to uh, say something about the scripture or to read, Sis Diane. But it, was up to, uh, it was up to read the, the next one. Okay, you can um, go ahead then, and this lady's going to come back and. Uh, okay, um, and that was Proverbs 20 and 27, and it reads, uh, The spirit of man is the candle <clears throat> of Yahuwah, searching all the inward parts of the belly. And... Um, you know, I like that because you know we're um, we're we're spirit. You know, we're part spirit. We're mind, body, and we're spirit, and <clears throat> it is that's the part of us that gives the light. You know, because our spirit is what's um, most connected. It's the candle uh, of Yahuwah. It lights up Yahuwah. It shows who Yahuwah is by the way we live, our actions, and. Uh, what we say, what comes out of our mouth, our baruch, our holiness, our righteousness. Um, this is how, through our spirit, this is how we show who we are, you know, in Yahuwah. We, we you know, we're, we're, we're the light, you know, to the world, um, searching all the inward parts of the belly. And this is how uh, it's supposed to be. Not only do we... Um, not only do we give, but uh, we also um, receive, you know, um, as scripture tells and to whom much is given, much is expected in, in return, we give and we receive. The light comes in, 
um, through uh, Heavenly Father and we learn from him. And as a result, um, the light also goes out. We are to be an example. We're supposed to be that light, you know, um, sitting on the hill that shines. You know, that's, that's the way I see that. Hallelujah. Very good, said Diane. Very good. Yes, you're right on target there. Um, as we progress with these scriptures, if for any reason I get cut off or anything, just continue with the scriptures because the rest of it is basically just going to be following uh, the, uh, the guide. Thank you, Father. Okay, that was really good. Um, this is very important. These scriptures are very important because it's laying the foundation for the importance of, the, of uh, our Messiah, Yusha, uh, uh, giving this uh, parable uh, from the uh, beginning. Matter of fact, uh, before we go any further, is there anyone that would like to give us a definition on what a parable is? If you have a definition or if you have any insight as to what a parable is before we go any further, just you can just uh, go ahead and uh, speak now. Because some people have their hands raised to read, so I don't want to interfere with that. I would just say that a parable is uh, kind of like uh, uh, analogies that are given uh, to to, to make a point or to teach a, a story, like it's an example. And um, like we could say analogy, you know, use an example to, to teach, right. to give a teaching. So um, yeah. basically that's, that's what a parable is. It's instructions um, using what the individual is familiar with. Uh, for instance, as we're yes, talking absolutely. about lamp, they would they would be using uh, that's part of their culture. They would understand the usage of the lamps and what the lamps mean um, cultural wise. So in order to teach a lesson, uh, the teacher would say use examples of the lamp, you know, to teach a lesson. So, right, uh, right, absolutely, very good. That's uh, uh, very true. Use yes, a simple story to teach a, a, a moral, or just like you said, a moral or spiritual uh, truth. So we, that's the reason why we're meditating on these verses because we want to see the spiritual intent. We want to get past the, 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 the surface and see what's being said um, as a spiritual truth. Thank you very much for that uh, input. Okay, uh, our next verse is uh, 2 Samuel 22, uh, 29. Who would like to take that one? Um, may I be permitted to comment on the, the last two scriptures quickly? Oh, yes, absolutely. So the, the one that Sister Leticia read in Luke, it was amazing how it speaks directly to this parable it's almost like it's you know there's there's different witnesses in scripture you know as as we're learning and it and it, mm -hmm. i've never noticed that scripture before so i was uh, it was really insightful to see how it mentions the wedding feast the lamp you know the whole picture there is there in that script in those scriptures and then the one that sister diane read <laughs> I love how she mentions the city on a hill um, and how um, we're not going to put our, um, that, that it, it reminded me of another scripture, how we are living epistles and we're the only word that's, or Bible that some people see, you know, not necessarily always what we say but what we do you know we're that living example of the word we're living it out it's living it's breathing and they see our light shining and so you know and exactly what sister diane said you know it's you know and, and you know i'm sure we heard that song when we were children D don't put our light under a bushel no <laughs> but we're gonna let it shine mm -hmm. 
And then that speaks to the uh, scripture that Sister Maria read too. Don't, we don't put it in a bushel. We, we set it up so the whole house can see it, you know. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Very good. Very good, Sis June. Very good. A really good insight. And I'm glad that you reemphasize the importance of why I um, included Luke, the 12th chapter, 35 and 36, because that's very essential. So what I want to see is what are you gathering? What, what are you receiving from it? What's coming out? Of, and, and, and that's really good. Uh, you uh, allowing the uh, truth to subjectively flow out of you. And that's really good. Keep up that good work. Um, our next scripture is uh, 2 Samuel, the 20. Oh, I think Sister Leticia wants to uh, elaborate further on the scripture that she read. Yes, um, Shalom sisters. <laughs> I apologize about earlier. I wasn't getting any reception. I just wanted to point out that, um, that with that verse that I read, uh, a little bit before that, it just kind of okay. goes along with um, what Sister June just brought out. It says, uh, no man, okay. when he hath lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bush, bushel, but a, on a candlestick that they, which come in me, and come in may see the light. So it's just really interesting. But it was just two verses behind. And then it says, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when the eye is single, thy whole body is also full of light. But when the eye is evil, the, thy body is also full of darkness. Full of darkness. And um, and then what I just wanted to say about the verses that I read um, is that our light is the light that we have in us. Like there's no dark, there's when your body is has a light, there's no darkness. No darkness can can. Um, the light is like that word, that ruach that, that the Father gives us. I, I mean, at least that's how I see it. And um, so there's no place for darkness. And so when we have that light, um, and and then we um, it shines through. Like people can see that light as we're walking it out. You know, they can see the, they see like the fruit of the ruach within us. They can see like the Yahusha dwells in us, right? And his light is he dwells in within us and his light shines through in us. So there's no part, there's no, there's no space, there's no room for darkness. It's we are full with that light and we have to, you know. And we have to keep it that way. We have to work in on it. You know, we have to ask the Father, say, Father, you know, seek what's in us that is not a view that is dark and and correct it so that we can continue to have this light in us. That's what I wanted to say. Shalom, sister. Yeah, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And as we realize, when we, as we recognize this essential value, of the light, as you said, then that's the, that, prior, by, that prioritizes uh, what we do to ensure that our lamps are continuously burning and that we never, and that we don't fall into the same situation as some of the virgins in this, in this particular parable. So very good, thank you for sharing. Um, uh, Sis June, who's next on your, on your list to read? Or oh, I see Sis Jerrica has her hand up. Um, Sister Jerrica, did you want to um, uh, comment on what has been stated already, or are you? Uh, do, do you want to read further? I wanted to read the Second Samuel. Okay, sure. You can read Second uh, Samuel twenty two and twenty nine. Okay, and it reads, "For you are my lamp, O Yahuwah, and Yahuwah makes my darkness light." And what I take from that is that Yahuwah is the one guiding us. He is our light. And because of Yahuwah, he takes our darkness and he turns it to light. So those places in our life and in, within us that are dark, he makes them light. When we open up and let him into our life, he transforms us into a new person, that new woman or that new man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Absolutely. All praise be to your name, Father. Thank you, Sister Jericho, for sharing. 
Okay, our next uh, verse is Psalms 119 and 105. And Sister uh, Casey, she either has a comment or is volunteering to read. Right. I was uh, volunteering to read. Okay, so that's Psalms 119 and 105. Okay, it Thank says you, your... Case. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. What are you getting out of that, sis? Um, well, it lights our path so we know where to go. We're not in darkness. It's it's not like you're walking in at night and, and you can't see because it's dark. You have a, a light to your feet so you know where you're going. Right, absolutely. His word is so essential and we can become so one with this word that he actually begins to communicate personally with us and that's the place we wanna get to that we're not just using his word in an, in, in an eclectic type manner. I want this and I want a little bit of this and I want a little bit of that. But that we begin to humble ourselves after becoming in, in gross, integrated with his word so that he begins to lead, guide, and direct us in his word by his Ruach HaKadosh. Because he can give us a right now word for every single in our lives. And it's different when he gives us a word or when we give our own selves a word. So these are the distinctions that we want to make. We want to become a part, to have such a relationship with our Father and with our Messiah that he leads, guides, and directs us, that our Mashiach, he guides us as the head of his body through the word by his Ruah. This word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our fear. And we're not talking about just picking a word out of the, uh, out of, out of the, uh, out of the hat. We're talking about humbling ourselves in his presence so that he can lead God and direct us by his word. So you're absolutely right, sis. And thank you very much for sharing. Okay, um, our next verse, uh, sis June, is... Uh, Proverbs, I, I believe, 6 and 23. Okay, sure, go ahead. You have a, a, a comment? Yes, ma'am, just a quick one. Uh, well, well we, take your time. Take your time. <laughs> we discussed how the, the parables are like picture stories, if you will. And you were saying, you know, how the words are functions. And this one right here just really paints a picture for me in terms of, you know, he's, he's light, not, he's not just, you know, the word says, if we acknowledge him in all our ways, he'll direct our path. And mm -hmm. the way he does it is by lighting it up. <laughs> That's how he directs us along the path. He's lighting and showing us the way to go. And so if, if we don't have that lamp, then we're like, Sister Letty was, was alluding to, like, we're walking around in, in darkness and we don't know where to go, you know? So I just, that one right there just always is a, is a blessing to me when we, you know, think about um, that, you know, I, I'm also thinking of, for some reason, Hansel and Gretel, <laughs> how, you know, they had they knew where to go because of the trail. But in this case, we know where to go because the, the word and Yahushua himself is lighting the way. And it's just amazing, you know, how this all ties together. Yes, absolutely. I, I, there's, uh, I'm sure all of you have experienced from one time to another or another uh, of maybe reading the same scripture, maybe, numerous times and then all of a sudden you get this real clear lit up revelation or understanding of what it really means when he well, lights it when he shines his light on it right. i don't care how many degrees you have i don't care how many times you have read that into that particular scripture before when he lights it up 
you get an understanding about it like that you have never, ever had before. And this is what we pray for. We pray for this type of guidance. All praise be to your precious name, Father. Absolutely. Thank you for making that point. Who's, uh, yes, uh, I think uh, you have some hands over there, Sister June. Yes, Sister Diane. Um, actually, I just wanted to follow up. I, I put my hand up, but Sister June uh, so eloquently uh, spoke what I was thinking. And uh, from <laughs> Psalms, <laughs> Psalms uh, 119, uh, 105, that's such a, um, a powerful verse there. Um, you know, if you could put that back up just for a minute, uh, Sister, Sister June, where it says, your word is a lamp, you know, is, is his word, you know, that gives us light. You know, they're, they're, the light doesn't come from anywhere else as far as we're concerned. You know, those of us that are in the way, our, our, our light, our lamp comes from his word. And we recognize that. Um, and, and it directs our paths because it says that this is the light unto my feet. This is the light at my feet. This is my direction. Your word is my direction. Mm -hmm. Your word shows me the way I need to go. And um, without your word, then I'm living in darkness. I'm in darkness. I can't see. And this is relationship. You know, this is relationship with our with, with Yahusha because we're humbling ourselves before him. We recognize that we're his sheep, you know, and he's our shepherd, you know, where he guides us, that's where uh, we go. And, and we just can't see our way without him. Uh, that's what I really love about this, this verse because uh, the Psalms says no, you know, that is the word. You know, we live by his word. We breathe his word. His word, his word is life, you know, and this is how we see, this is how we understand, this is how we be in relationship, this is how we live, you know, this is our direction, you know, his word gives us direction, so, and without that, um, then we're stumbling in darkness, so I just, um, I, I just wanted to kind of ditto what has gone forth already. Absolutely, sis, absolutely, sis, and, and as you were speaking, you know, I thought about that when your feet, when if, if his lamp is, a, is, is, is his word is a, a lamp unto our feet and a, a light unto our path and just, just, just like you so uh, uh, eloquently stated, uh, when we receive that direction, that's when obedience has to come in and we walk in that path. We don't say, oh, no, well, I'm not going to take that path. I'm going to take another path or, you know, from a rational aspect, I don't see that this is going to work. Uh, uh, we do exactly what the word is stating for us to do, uh, uh, not only being hearers, but doers also so that we don't deceive ourselves. So it's really important for us to obey that word that is given to us when he light the word up. Uh, not only just to continuously store up lit words in our life, but to be doers of those words. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. So I think we're up to Proverbs 6 and 23. I see sis, uh, uh, Cassie or Casey has her, uh, her hand up. How do you pronounce this? Uh, Cassie's it's name, Cassie. or is it Casey? It's Cassie. Cassie, okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, sis, you, did you want to read or were you going to add something else? I can read and I, I also want to uh, add some more on that Psalms 119. Okay, great. I think Proverbs 6 and 23 relates to it too, so I'll read it. Okay, uh, right. For the command is a lamp and the Torah a light and reproofs of discipline, a way of life. And then uh, what I wanted to comment was that um, in Psalm 119, 105, when it says thy word, it made me think of um, John 1, 1, where it says in the beginning was the word and the word was 
we're Elohim and the word was Elohim. And it just, it just sparked that light bulb in my mind that Yahusha is the word. And so when I read Psalms 19, 105, when it says thy word is a lamp, it just automatically made me think Yahusha. The word is Yahusha. Yahusha is the lamp. He is the living word. He's the living Torah. And, and, and I also in Proverbs 6, 23, when it says the Torah is a light. Again, it made me think of Yahusha. Because he, he's the living word. He, he's the living Torah. And, and then... And the other thing that came to mind too is like when it says in the previous verses that was read earlier that we are to be the light of the world. We are to be like Yahusha. He is the light. He is the living word. That's what we're supposed to mimic. That's what we're supposed to follow after his example so we can be as he was. Absolutely, sis. Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. These words are really worth pondering. These are Selah words. These are words to meditate on because uh, this is a really, really, this is a really, really good topic here. This can take us forward to be successful, to be successful daughters of Zion. Act, not only successful, but acceptable daughters of Zion by following uh, these principles that are being laid out tonight. Um, yes, it's June. I really, really love Cassie's scriptures with, um, you know, Yahusha is the word and Torah is the word. And I was even thinking how Yahusha, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he guided our, our ancestors. He was the fire by night and that was a light. You know, so he was literally uh, a light guiding, guiding them or with them there in the wilderness as well. Hallelujah. Well, praise be to your name, Father. Does anyone else have anything else to add to this particular uh, scripture here? If not, we're going to go on to the next one. I think we are up to, um, let me see, is Leviticus on here? Leviticus uh, 24 and 2. Can we go to uh, Leviticus 24 and 2? First Samuel 16 and 13. That one wanted that over there. The first Samuel 16 and 13, we'll be discussing that one with the oil. That's the scripture over there for the uh, oil that we incorporated at the uh, a little earlier. Okay, can we go to Leviticus, uh, Leviticus 24 and 2 very quickly? It's not on the list. Uh, we intended, it was intended to be a place on the list, but it's okay. Uh, we'll just go right over to it because we do make some changes sometimes as the father. Uh, the precious things by his rule out on our hearts after the after the study has pretty much been uh, put together. Uh, Leviticus 24 and 2, I think this is a really, really important scripture to uh, include. Can I get someone to read? Sis June, you want to read it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Leviticus 24 and 2 from the scriptures ISR. Command the children of mm -hmm. Israel that they bring to you clear oil of pressed olives for the light to make the lamb lamps burn continually. Continually. What do you want to share with that? Can you share a little something just <laughs> from what you read right there? I'm thinking of that children's song again. <laughs> keep my oil in my lamp. Keep it burning, burning, burning. <laughs> keep it burning ongoing um yes yes and the light was not supposed to go out even in the tabernacles and the temples that light was not it was supposed to burn continually it was the priests attended to those lights that the lamps would never ever go out they were not ever supposed to go out and we can make that uh we can make that interrelate that 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 correspondent relative to what we're talking about now as us being uh, our lamps also. Our light is never supposed to go out. It's supposed to 
burn continually. Praise Yah. That's why I wanted to include that one. So now we can go on. Okay, so thank you, Sis June. I see it there. Okay, so now, the, oh, that's that one right there. We're supposed to, that's supposed to be Zephaniah 1 and 12. We up to Zephaniah 1 and 12. Now, okay, if I can get that real quick. If, okay, Sister Leticia, I think Sister Leticia has it. You know, um, thank you so much. This is a beautiful verse that Sister June just read in Leviticus 24 2. And I think, like, it's amazing that, like, the light is continually, continuously uh, burning. And this is a tabernacle. So it's a place, mm -hmm. of, the holy place where Yahuwah dwelt, you know, and this light needed to be burning continuously. And it just, Mm -hmm. tying it to the light in us you know it continuously needs to be lit up you know and so it's a beautiful yes. verse hallelujah yes hallelujah absolutely uh that and that's that's the that's hitting it right on the target says leticia you know that's exactly we can see we see a picture of ourselves we truly see a picture of ourselves right there of how we are to be at all times, not sometimes, but all times. And this is why we're laying this foundation so that we can see what it is, what, what it necessitates to live our lives like this so that we don't run this race and um, become defeated or hindered or anything like that when, our, when the adversities and the testing trials come our way that we're able to stand, we're able to endure, we're able to persevere. But hey, this is a lifelong run. This is a lifelong race. You know, it's not, we get to a certain point and we can say, okay, I, you know, I've arrived and, you know, go and sit down somewhere and just ride it out the rest of the way. Hey, we got to keep the faith all the way, all the way. And this is why we want to uh, uh, discuss these principles and establish these principles in our hearts and our minds so that we can be victorious. We can grow up as daughters of victorious daughters of Zion and not uh, be defeated by Hashatan's uh, subtle uh, tactics and wiles, which uh, seem to uh, sometimes take so many of our, our faithful ones. Uh, down to win the race. We don't want to digress at any point in it. Praise Yah. It's a, it's a disheartening thing to see anyone run the race so hard and not make it to the finish line. That's a very, very uh, a sad thing. So we're doing what we can now to instill the right principles in each and every one of us as the rule I lead so that we'll be very well equipped for our race, praise y'all. I think, okay, since June, I think you have some hands over there. Uh, yes, we have sister oh, Diane, and there was another hand, but they just put it down and I forgot who it was. Yeah, okay, uh, can someone, uh, if, if you wanna uh, just, you know, elaborate on anything that's been discussed so far, you can go ahead. And our next scripture that uh, will be, uh, our reading will be Zephaniah 1 and 12. I don't want to leave that one out. Oh, yeah, it's up there. Okay. Since June, you can let them know who can go next. Okay. Uh, Sister Diane, could you read Zephaniah for us? Oh, you're muted, sis. And I didn't know if you had a comment prior yeah. to that. Actually, I did have a comment um, to, to Leviticus 24 and 2. Um, Sister Erin, if she wants to read Zephaniah 1 and 12, um, that's fine. If not, I'll read it. Um, but in terms of Leviticus 24 and 2, what stands out to me is that um, he says, um, uh, Yahuwah says, pure oil beaten for the light. So, you know, this was not just, this is not just regular old olive oil, you know, just, you know, where you just 
however they beat it, you know, however they prepare it. This is like a special uh, preparation here. As if to say, you know, there there may be, you know, there there are different qualities, and you know, we know that we always bring our best to Yahuwah. You know, we don't second anything; it's always the best. And this is a uh, uh, oil that's uh, specially prepared, you know, uh, to cause the lamps to burn continually. This particular oil causes the lamps to burn continually, which means that there's other oil out there that will not suffice, you know, like, like mm -hmm. uh, a second quality or lesser quality, you know, and he only wants the best, uh, only the one that went, that, that, that makes it to the end of the race, as uh, Amalinda was just mentioning, you know, it's very heartening to see someone, they go so far, and then they're almost at the end, and they don't make it to the end. So this is a special oil. It's not just any oil. I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, mm -hmm. just to kind of bring that out, it was processed just for the light, you know, and it had a purpose. And that's to cause the lamps to burn continually. So that says a lot about the oil itself. And, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you what you just what you just stated, it 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 should have been repeated because the wisdom that you just brought forth as a true elder uh, is very impressive. I think uh, what you stated about the pureness of the oil and as we're receiving the spiritual intent of that, it should be a motivation for each and every one of us as daughters of, of, of Yahshua to want to be the best, to have that mark of excellence, to not just become a part of the culture and not strive to, to, to please our father and to uh, be exalted to glorify him in the best of ways, living our lives in that pureness of Ruah, as you just talked about. Mm -hmm. All praise be to your name, Father, and thank you so much for sharing that, Sister Amen. Diane. Amen. <clears throat> I think we have, uh, if, uh, do we have any more remarks pertaining to what was stated? Um, I see Sister Bess with her hand up, but it doesn't appear she's connected to the audio. I'm not sure. Are you Are you able to speak, Sister Bess? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, okay. You're on a different square <laughs> there. Okay. Shalom. <laughs> yes. Yeah, shalom. <laughs> yeah, I have my tablet on because I didn't know which um, scriptures we were reading, so I had to turn my tablet on, but I'm actually hearing it through my telephone, so mm -hmm. my cell phone. So maybe that's why you see it differently. But I was just um, listening to everything and I was just wanted to participate in the reading because I'm new to this, so I'm a work in progress, so. Oh, that's great. That's great, says <laughs> Okay, so we're going to be reading from uh, Zephaniah uh, 1 and 12. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to read uh, that particular scripture. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have it here. Um, and I'm reading it from, from the Bible. Um, so from 1 to 12 or just 1 and 12? Just 1, uh, one uh, verse uh, one, tw 1 and 12. Okay. Just, just okay. verse Just 12. one verse. One. Okay. Yes, just verse 12. Okay, so the word of the Lord, which came unto Stephania, the son of Cushi, the son of Gedalia, the son of Amaria, the son of, where am I? I can't pronounce it. Uh, sis, sis, just, just go down to verse 12. Go down to verse 12 and oh, read 12. verse 12. Just only verse 12. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And it shall come to pass at the time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and the punish that men that are settled on their knees that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Is that the right one? Okay. 
Mm, uh, just that particular verse. We just, I just wanted to add that particular verse because he says mm -hmm. that it's going to come to pass at that time that he will search Jerusalem with lamps. Okay. And punish the men that are settled on their leaves. And leaves mean something that's preserved. Something that is preserved. And say in their hearts, your oil will not do good, neither will he do evil. It's this type, these type of attitudes that will come in hand, uh, will come into our minds when we begin our second part of the study and we start seeing those things that uh, are hinder and cause people not to be prepared to the end. So I wanted to include uh, that one, uh, that particular verse also. And the word candles there uh, can be substituted with lamps. Lamps, candles, light, all those words can be uh, used interchangeably oftentimes. Thank you very much, sis, for um, reading that particular scripture. Uh, we do need someone to read Proverbs 31 and 18. Well, I'll, I'll read it if no one is volunteering. Thank you. Uh, this is this is all so beautiful. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. I have to let me get it really quick. <laughs> let's see. Proverbs. 31 and 18. And it reads, uh, she perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. Um, this is powerful. Um, we, we actually uh, are seeing, we're actually seeing the female essence here because mm -hmm. um, the verse actually begins with she. And um, looking at the other verses that surround um, 3 and 18, it speaks of the female. Actually, all of them does. Since I'm looking at this thing. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, yeah, so this, this particular section that I'm reading is called The Woman Who Fears um, Yeshua. So, yeah, so there we go. Um, she perceived that her merchandise is good. She knows what she has is good. <laughs> you know, she's confident. She, she knows who she is. Whatever merchandise may be is what, one's, what one owns. It's what we have. You know, it belongs to us. Uh, whether we created it ourselves or whether we purchased it, you know, if I create something, then it's mine, it's my merchandise, um, or if it's given to me. Um, and, and it's really beautiful, just like when uh, when the earth was created, Yahoo would say, and, and it was good. <laughs> so uh, right. if, we go and, if we go and look at the Strong's, it, it could very well be that the word good would be the same Strong's number as this particular one I, I don't know i have to go and look at that and it says her candle go not out by night so we can take that night as meaning the opposite of day or we could take that night as meaning um a spiritual darkness you know um her candle go go not out by night so she's a woman of strength we could say her merchandise who she is her character her um, understanding her wisdom, you know, her love for family, her love for uh, Yeshua, her love for the word, you know, it's a good thing. And she knows it, you know, she's confident. This is like uh, saying uh, the virgin that has oil in her lamp, you know, and she knows who she, she's ready, you know, and uh, it's not going to go out by night. We just read that that, that lamp, that, uh, that lamp is a light into my path. Have to go back and look at that. Um, but any uh, Psalms, what was it? Um, 119, 119 and 105. And 105. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this kind of goes along uh, with that when it, it doesn't go out. She's ready. She's prepared. You know, I know who I am, you know, um, and, and Yahuwah. I know who I am. I know his word is on the inside of me. I have no doubt, you know, as to who I am. And that's what's so beautiful about this uh, Proverbs 31, 18. 
Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And we know that Proverbs, you know, 31 is an epitome. It's a summary that uh, most women uh, of Yahshua, they uh, try to uh, pattern themselves behind. And we see even right here in the midst of it, it's talking about the candles, not the lamps, not going out. So uh, we see the essential value also again right there. Very, very good. We have one more. Uh, since June, I believe since June, you have something to us uh, add? Yes, I'm very commenty tonight. <laughs> uh, this, oh, good, good. <laughs> uh, we, as as you know, we studied, you know, this um, in, in this series. This is the virtuous woman, and I believe we studied mm -hmm. virtuous in our Hebrew class as well. And it's mm -hmm, a warrior. Right. Right. And so when I read that scripture, um, in addition to everything Sister Diane so eloquently said, I'm, I'm also I have this picture in my mind of a woman who is who is diligent and she's going to get the job done. She's not going to turn off that switch or her, her lamp um, and fold her hands and you know, the, the kids aren't fed and <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, the husband doesn't have clean sheets to sleep on. You know, she's, yeah. she's going to um, um, carry out her um, roles and, and responsibilities that Yahuwah has given her as a woman, woman of Yah, Yahuwah, um, which she does all kinds of stuff, you know, if you read the whole thing, but <laughs> uh, praise Yahuwah. <laughs> Absolutely. And just to add, just to add to all of that, keeping those candles burning in those and in, in, in the night, uh, many labor, many women are known to labor in prayer. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is sleeping. They're praying. And um, hey, we are on it. We are women. <laughs> and we are talking about our, we are talking about ourselves. And, but we, and we are glorying, the glor, glorying in the strength and the, the ruah that the Father has placed within us. We are beautiful, wonderful species of people. Uh, exceptional. All praise be to your name, Father. And I'm so happy. I am just so happy that the Father created me as a woman. Well, he created me as a little baby girl, but as I've grown into a woman, and I can say glory, hallelujah, Father, I don't regret it one bit. Praise Yah. And I'm sure you right. girls don't either. Praise Yah. We have one more scripture for the lamp. And I, we could finish up the, uh, uh, we could, I, we're not going to rush through the, uh, the oil. We'll do the oil at the beginning of next week. We're not going to rush through it because this has been so excellent here. And we want to take our times and we want to really meditate and get those Salah moments as we've been getting on tonight. Okay, our last scripture for the lamp. And after this, I'll open up the floor to anyone that has any final remarks. And um, because we only do only have about five minutes left in the class. Um, Philippians 2 and 15. Now, that first thing you're 16 and, and, and 13, that will be discussed next week with the uh, oil, with the, what the oil represents. Okay, uh, Philippians 2 and 15, can I get a, a reader for this last uh, scripture? And matter of fact, why don't you just read 13, 14, and 15? Sis Leticia? <sighs> okay, so Philippians uh, 13 through 15, for it, <clears throat> for it is... Yahuwah, which worketh in you both to will and to do it of his good pleasure, do all things without murmuring and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of Yahuwah, or without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Hallelujah. Um, this is a beautiful... These are all beautiful verses. Um, praise Abba. I just wanted to um, comment with this one. Um, like, it's really easy to, because it, you know, it says, 
you know, we live in a nation, we live in a world that is perverse. Um, you know, it's just crooked right now. Everything that is sweet, they call it bitter. Everything that's up, they call it down. Everything that it's just, it's just everything has been all of Yahuwah's word has been. It seems like it's tr they're trying to perverse and twist it. And like, and so as we're living in this world, I think what I take from this is that we ought to be the light. We have to walk it out and not to get ourselves caught up with the, you know, with, you know, gossiping or murmuring at work or within ourselves. And because we are that light, we have to walk it out. You know, it is for the glory of the father. Um, that's so this is what I got. This is what stood out to me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You actually just gave an excellent summary for us tonight. All praise be to your precious name, Father. I think this study has um, truly been one to truly reflect on. And I think a, a whole lot of golden nuggets have come out of it on tonight. And we're going to uh, conclude it for tonight here. And we'll pick right up here uh, uh, next weekend and pray that the Ruah Hakadash will continue to lead, guide, and direct us as we continue to receive the uh, spiritual intent uh, from this study. So this concludes the study for tonight. Shalom. We pray this video is helpful to your journey in the truth. Remember to be like the Bereans in Acts 17.11, who received the word with all readiness of mind, then search the scriptures to see if what they heard was true. We have studies for the whole family, including children, every week. To learn more, visit assemblyofyahuwah.com. Use the Join tab to express interest in participating. Use the Give tab to help support biblical assembly needs. To be notified of new videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Much love and shalom.